Good morning, guys. It's Monday morning. I'm looking forward to the week. It is Thanksgiving week. You won't be seeing this for weeks and weeks, maybe even months, because I am ahead on my filming. I'm excited about the day. I've already done a lot of my computer work that I need to do. I'm ready to get painting and I had a couple things I was going to tell you. I keep looking at my initial painting, so that one, and feeling like it's more vibrant than some of the others. Now that granted could just be the way I painted it, but I'm wondering if I gessoed the surface. I can't remember because sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. But it makes sense that that was gessoed and the others weren't, and that's why it could be more vibrant because there's something about a gessoed surface where the paint will sit more on the on the top. So I gessoed a bunch of paper yesterday, front and back. I'm gonna use my Golden Matte Acrylics. And I also wanted to tell y'all this. So I have been using, where is it? Where are ya? This tape around the edges is an automotive performance masking tape and it's green. Now, I don't really love the green. It kind of messes me up a little when it's around the edges until it's covered because any color you have on your palette, it's going to mess you up. But I got this other one that's yellow and it's an automotive refinishing masking tape. 3M is the brand, I think. I don't know but I really like the yellow and it's a little less sticky because I was having issues when I took it off that it was kind of pulling the paper a little bit at times when I wasn't being real careful. I do think I won't have to be as careful now that I've gessoed it. That should not be a problem at all. But I love this yellow. It's just starting me off in a excited mode because that will go with probably anything that I do because I have little bits of yellow in it. So I'm excited. I pulled this still life over that's really not even like a setup still life. It's just a table that has a bunch of stuff on it. But I want to look at it from above and possibly like this is really exciting me right here looking down at these oranges which are starting to rot. Ooh, that one's really soft and rotten. Yuck. I wonder if it smells in here. Yeah, I just wanted to get a different view. I'm going to pull up some pictures from my computer that I've been saving and just get inspired by some things. And I'm realizing that I just need to get the page filled with some kind of like stuff and simple pattern and then go on top of that with more of my real. Sorry, I was like pointing y'all at the blank page. Who wants that? What's this? Yeah, so I just want to get the page filled and then I want to go on top of that, I think, with like my real painting. And I already kind of have a vision of the composition, I think. And I don't want a cat in there. I'm having a ton of fun painting cats. The alligator is going. He's not really working too well in my paintings. The one that he's in, I, I do like. Yeah, so I just want to get started. I'm excited. Here I'm just wetting the palette with my water bottle because it's acrylics. I just want to keep things wet so everything doesn't dry up on my palette. Guys, for me, this is like just such a fun stage. It's where I can just play and who cares and I'm just building things up and it always feels like later that I'm gonna, I'm losing all of this and wasting it, but it's just never wasted. It all peeps through or helps build things up in some way or another and plus it's just stinking fun. Okay, so here's the final background. I think that I like the color scheme. What's nice about this stage is that you can just play and you really do want some variety but most of this is going to get covered up i think it's dry yeah so there's what i'm starting with i don't really know what i'm going to do yet what i want to use as my reference if it'll mainly be this or something else so i think what i'm going to do is take my color pencils and start doing some drawing on top of it because I did that in this painting and I really liked how some of those marks stayed in the kind of underpainting stage. I know I'm going to do a still life. I'm sure a chair will end up in there and hopefully a figure and a cat. Those are the things that I'm aiming for. It would be nice if this kind of felt like a body of work at the end. I don't know. I just know I'm going to have fun doing it and I'm feeling more confident that I can make it work in the end after that last one that I struggled with. Actually, now that I'm looking at it though, there's still things I don't like about it. It's interesting, the man that I kept trying to save, I think he should have gone, but he's there, so he's staying. I just, sometimes you just gotta move on, you know what I mean? Yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. I also feel like uh, y'all probably see me wear this sweatshirt a lot and like my new painting studio uniform and it's very comfortable grady's dad gave it to me we're just at home so i'm not going anywhere so it really doesn't matter if it's a little stinky 
So I'm just wearing it like every day. So it's probably, I'm probably gonna be having it on like every video and y'all are gonna be like, did you film this all in one day? Anyways, okay, I need to get back to painting. Why am I rambling about this? I gotta go paint. Let's stay focused, stay focused. My colored pencils, I use the, mainly the ones in here are the Faber-Castell Polychromos colored pencils. I want to just make marks on here and not really care. You know what I mean? Like make some marks and they'll hopefully still kind of be there, but I don't want to feel too precious about it. Okay. I've put way more marks on here than what I thought. I thought this would be helpful, but it's not helpful. I need to just jump in. I mean, maybe it was helpful a tiny bit. I'm trying to decide where I want the table top. You know, do I want it going off the page? Do I want it to stay on the page? I mean, it's all the places around, especially here and up here that I have the most trouble with. The table and maybe even under the table, I don't have as much trouble with, but I'm kind of wishing I didn't have all these lines now, but they're there and I'll probably be so happy at the end. I think I need to block in the table or do something. I gotta just like start someplace. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a cat under here, maybe a chair someplace, but I may just have things coming off of the table. I don't know. Let's see. We'll see. Guys, I know I've mentioned this on this channel before, but I use my mirror so much to figure out a painting. I don't know, it's, it's really is just like magic the way it helps you see differently. And if you could see how much I was in this position while I'm painting, I, I probably am looking in the mirror more than I am painting. I edit so much of this out because you would be like, get on with it, woman, why are you doing this? But I'm telling you, it is hot diggity doggity helpful. I've definitely learned the importance of keeping clean water or clean turpentine if you're using oils. It's just so important, whether you're using gouache or acrylic or watercolor, empty and change your water often. I feel like this leg is too fat, and so I want to, you know, keep as much of um, the rug as I can, so I'm trying to wipe this back. Sometimes if you just dip your rag in some water while it's still drying, it'll wipe right up. It's just one of the nice things about this matte fluid acrylic is that it is like my flash paint. It stays wet at a nice time where you can still work on it. And I need to wipe instead of talking to y'all. All right, I'm gonna clean up now. It's time almost time for lunch. I'm gonna let all this dry. It's also doing kind of a weird thing. I think I've gotten too watery of paint and it's like resisting. It's kind of weird. I'm not real sure what's going on there, but I'm gonna just let everything settle down and dry. If you're like, that table looks pretty see-through, it's because I want to build it up. I really love how some of these tables are kind of more built up with color. Sorry, I was ta talking that way. Y'all probably didn't hear me, but I love how some of the other tables that I've done have been built up with color. I'm gonna clean off my gorgeous palette over here clean my brushes, have some lunch,
have some coffee, reevaluate, and get back to it. I'll probably also clean off my palette when I get back. I don't know, I can't, sometimes I like just a fresh clean palette, but there's a lot of paint on here, so I don't want to waste it. I think I'm gonna spray it and then cover it with saran wrap and see how that goes. I've been putting this jar upside down before I color, cover it with saran wrap because if not, the saran wrap just sticks to all the paint. Okay, so this is where I am thus far. I forgot to turn the camera on when I was working on this, so sorry about that. Got in the zone. I love things like this. I don't remember what that started off being, but it almost feels like there was some kind of circle back there. I think I'm gonna use that to fill in possibly like a cloth or something on the table. I'm just kinda continuing to look in my mirror and fill in. Another really great thing about this stage is that I do not have to get the color or value even correct. I mean, I really don't want like this chair right here to be all the same exact color anyways because it would look too like blocky or something. I don't know. I want some depth to it and some interest. So you'll see that I don't like just paint the entire thing or one whole part of the painting like the exact same color. I never mix like a big pile of paint for one area. I do little bitty piles, fill my brush up, and then go remix because that way I can get some really good variety. Right here, if you will notice, I've left the table and I'm now carving around to actually form a vessel that's holding these peaches and oranges, whatever these fruits are. I really like this method of like just carving back around to form this piece of like glass, which is what I'm wanting that to kind of look like. And then I just continue to build up the table to make it different colors in places, but still read white, even though it will have some depth because of all the shift of color. Your brain will read this tablecloth as white even though it will have some depth because of all the shift of color. All right, guys, it is officially the end of the day. I need to go clean my brushes and wrap up. I am in like mode with this painting. I don't know if it's because I'm tired. I've not been feeling good. I've got like sinus allergy stuff, but things are not going well. I'm de I was going to say things are not going well with the painting, but I'm definitely in that spot where I'm like, hey, what to do? I I need to take a break. I need to clean up and just call a day is what I need to do. Today I've been working on this painting and editing. Taking breaks. Paint some. Let things dry. Go edit. Yes, so I'm going to go clean up. I'll show you where I am. Ended up taking the easel down because the paints were running a ton. I don't know what the deal was. So I've got it flat on the table right now. And so I'm not going to be able to get a good shot of it because usually I have the easel. Well, let me go get a stool. Let me go get on a stool for you guys. Well, it is a hot mess on this desk. So there are things I do like about it, but the areas that I usually have issues with resolving, I'm having issues with resolving. The table I'm feeling somewhat okay with, even though, it's, yeah, I still have some resolving to do. I just need to sleep on it and come back with a fresh look in the morning. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm tired. Done a little bit of work to the table this morning. Added a cat, which is not looking good, but I'm gonna let him dry before I work some more on him. Yeah, I think I'm getting there. There's still, I need more down here. I don't really know yet what, but I'm gonna do something. This is feeling unresolved. I feel like I need to work, get back to working small. Yeah, my gut is telling me I need to get back into my sketchbooks. I think I'm starting to feel overwhelmed with this, the bigness of this and resolve on a smaller scale. 
some of these issues that I'm having. It feels like the tabletop I've got, but that's been consistent in all my work. The background or kind of the non-focal, I don't know, surrounding areas are my weak spots. So I'll just keep working on it. It does get frustrating sometimes though. Um, yeah, it does get frustrating. I need to also, I think I'm gonna sit down for a few minutes and observe, just go look at some artist's work that I know do a really good job with all that background stuff. I can think of some that have a little busier background, which is not totally me, and some that have a plainer background, which is not totally me either. I want some interest there, but I've gotta figure out what my style, and I just wanna go get inspired and actually like look past the painting and look at the design work and see how some of these artists are accomplishing some of these, or, or tackling some of these areas that I'm having issues with. I think one that will inform me, because what happens is sometimes you look at some art that you really like and you like it, but then to be able to keep looking and keep looking and, and think about and try to figure out how they've resolved things that you're having issues with, that's what I need to do. And what that will also do is like motivate me, inspire me, and maybe it'll be like the one thing, I don't know, I just, I need some breakthrough. I'm starting to feel a little like, if I forgot how to paint. So I think that's what I need to do. I'm gonna clean up over here and go get inspired and informed. Sometimes all we do is spend a large chunks of time observing or, or not observing, absorbing, just intaking, you know, maybe like on Instagram, scroll, 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 looking, but not really observing and thinking about the art that you really like and thinking about design and how people have put together and composed their paintings. So I would encourage you to, to do that. Think about composition. Think about color. Are they using a limited color palette? Do they have some really big shapes? Look for big shapes and how they're filling the space. Look at areas that you know that you have issues with and try to figure out what the artist was thinking and how they resolved those areas. I'm finding that I'm doing this more and more because I really want to get good at the type of art that I'm doing, but there's still a lot I have to learn. I have certain artists that I go to and I'm like, okay, how did they resolve this? How did they do this? And it makes me really look. It does take a little while to train your eye to do that though. I wanted to show you guys where I am with this. The last day that I worked on this, I left the studio so discouraged and feeling like, oh no, I've forgotten how to do this and felt like I was gonna have to scrap this one. And then I came in the next day and really was like, okay, nope, we're not gonna scrap this. There's something here. And they're just, you know, I love how there are little bits that I've painted over. So I think what I'm gonna do, I extended this table. I knew there was something with the composition that I didn't like, but I'm really happy with all the background stuff. What I'm gonna do is just start adding more stuff to the table. I've put some different things on my table over there. And I'm gonna just start adding things and see how that goes. I really wanted like a cat or something in here, but that wasn't working. I'm really happy with my boundaries, which is what I usually have trouble with. So now I'm gonna just tackle this and I'm really looking forward to it. So don't give up when you're feeling discouraged because you may come in and find that it's really workable. Okay guys, I finished this one last night and came back in this morning and I'm going to call it quits. I'm really happy with it. I'm really loving this composition and there were a couple things I thought about changing. thought about making this a little more solid in here too, but I just decided I'm gonna call it quits and move on to another one. I'm gonna tape the tape off Remember I used this yellow tape and I always love that process of taking the tape off. I'll show you it to you when I get that off. There's the finished painting. I'm super happy. I'm really proud of myself for like going on this journey of, of like not giving up. I also am happy that I got as much pattern in here as I did. So let me give you an example. So that pattern I got from this skirt that's from Africa. And I use that as my inspiration. Okay, and then see how I did this edging. I got that from this edging right here. And though that is red with little bop, 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 bops, I made it pink with little yellow bop, bop, bops. I also am super happy that I was able to make the snowman cup work. I really like him. And Look what I got in there. Snuck in a little plug. But that really kind of works, I like it. I've also found that I love painting cups. 
also love this little bit, this jar with the cherries. And then, so I really worked on like patterns. So I've got some darks that anchor around. Tried to move color around. Tried to think about size of things, overlapping of things. I'm happy with this one, guys. I'm really happy. I hope you like it too. Let me know. Oh, yikes. It is really stuck. Bummer. I gessoed this paper before I put the tape down, before I painted over it, so I was hoping that would help with this tape removal. I think it is. Thank you. Here's the finished painting, guys, with all the tape removed. I am thrilled with how it turned out. I feel like at this point, it may be one of my favorite ones. I absolutely love it. And I filmed the painting of that months ago, and I've painted so many more paintings from this as inspiration. I just love it. The colors look beautiful. I love the composition. And I've even got another one on the easel back there that I've already finished and have filmed for you guys, and that will be coming up in future vlogs. I hope you guys are enjoying these kind of videos. Let me know if you like seeing the process and see me struggle through these paintings and figure it out as I go. I hope you guys have a great week. hope you've enjoyed this week's video and I will see you back here next week. Bye guys.